Hello, it's Jeannie. How are you? I hope you are doing well, truly. Happy New Year. 2023 is here, and I hope you had a fun and safe New Year's. We, um, <laughs> we were in bed by 9.30, you know, real exciting here, and uh, my husband's sick, so He's doing better now, but he's got a bad chest cold. So we didn't do anything. Um, are, are you the kind of person who makes New Year's resolutions? I'm not. In my mind, I kind of do an assessment and think, you know, what are some of the things that I should do better? What are some of the goals I might want to achieve? But I don't do that just at the new year. I kind of do that monthly and just put things out there. Um, I also do a lot of, um, I don't know what the term is, scripting. You know, there's a book I read, uh, Scripting the Life You Want, I think is what it was called. And I've mentioned it before in my books and I do that. Um, there are days I, I forget, but overall I script and what I write are things as if they've happened. So I write from the future tense as if I'm looking back. Does that make sense? And I'll tell you something, it's really interesting to read back over those things. In So that's what I do, but none of this, uh, you know, New Year's resolutions, we're going to start doing this because I just fail at things like that. So, anyway, I, as you know, had an amazing Christmas, letting my family in on this, what I'm doing here, and I keep getting calls, and they're so interested, and they're asking me quite more and more questions about ASMR and YouTube and things like that. So it's kind of cool, you know, that the old one is introducing the younger ones to something a little more modern. Anyway, it's fun. Um, we, I, yeah, I'm not going to do a what I got for Christmas. You know, my husband always takes really good care of me. He always gets me something really cool and he got me a couple of um, nice purses that he knew I would want. So I'm really excited about that. And he also got me this jewelry and I thought I'd wear it today. Um, and I love this. It's Brighton and I love Brighton jewelry. And uh, so th the thing I like about Brighton is it looks, you know, it's really pretty, and but it's not, you know, super, super expensive. So anyway, he got me this as well. Um, I got a couple of other things that uh, were sent in from some subscribers, and I'm just so touched. Um, one of them, I have a new coffee cup. It says ASMR Whisper. And so I've got my tea in here. And I also have this. And this is from Nancy Miller of her company is called Coveted Necessities. And I'm going to put a link in because this stuff is really cool. All this custom. What, I guess whatever your company is, she can um, actually make stuff, you know, with with the logos. So, thank you so much, um, Nancy. This was this was just awesome. Thank you. And then one of my sweet gals down in Florida sent me this amazing knit blanket, and the yarn is like as thick as my two fingers so and pink my favorite color and she also sent me some licorice Australian licorice oh I love licorice I could 
could sit and eat that in one sitting. There's, I think, three bags in there. And, um, but I won't do it because I'd be so mad at myself. So I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to sit and eat that in one sitting. So, and I got this beautiful little angel. Can you see that? And she said she'd be my angel should I ever need help. I love that. Thank you, my dear. You know who you are. Okay, so now let's get to this video. I'm really excited about this because we are going back in time and you'll learn a little more about me. I have Tiger Beat magazines. Now, some of you younger folks may go, what is Tiger Beat? I don't even know if it's still out in publication still. But when I was a young teen, um, this is what you got if you wanted to follow your heartthrob. Now, David Cassidy was my heartthrob, remember. But before David Cassidy, I had another heartthrob. It was Speed Racer. Yes, a cartoon character. And I think he drove, it was called the Mach 5. And it, I would race home to watch that every evening. I think it came on at 5 o'clock. And if I was outside, I would make up an excuse to go in and watch Speed Racer in his amazing Mach 5. And the fact that he was a cartoon just didn't matter. I think I was maybe eight, nine, I don't know, something like that. I'd like to think I was younger, but I don't think I was. I was just a dork who was in love with a cartoon. So then the Partridge family came out and my heart just exploded for David Cassidy. I just thought his smile, his eyes, his singing, his, oh my God. And my next door neighbor was also a fan. And so between the two of us, we would try to find all these little, you know, pieces of information. Now remember, no internet in the, um, early 70s. None. You know. And so these magazines are from, let's see, December of... ...1971 and June of 1971. Now, interestingly enough, the December issue is 50 cents and the June issue Oh, it's also 50 cents. Okay, They're, I thought I saw 60. They're both 50 cents. So we would buy these magazines and I'm gonna walk through them with you. And this is how we found out about our favorite heartthrob stars. And I'm gonna show you how they appealed to the young girl because, you know, they did. Oh my gosh, they fit us as an adult looking back over this. I can just see how they marketed him and just, you know, just put him on display for all us young heart, you know, um, heart sick girls. Now, I think when my brother, my older brother was a little bit older, he had a Farrah Fawcett poster in his room. But I think he had that out of, I don't know, just because other guys did. And, you know, Farrah Fawcett was the bombshell in that red suit. But I don't recall him ever being completely nuts over some star. And now if he was, he sure kept it under wraps. He didn't tell me. So, and I didn't know many other guys who had heartthrob 
loves. So if you're a guy and watching this and you were the preteen, teen kind of guy, did you ever have somebody that you, some star, some heartthrob that you just went gaga for? Um, because that's how it was with me and David Cassidy, you know? And, um, but I don't remember my brother ever going bonkers over anybody. So, you know, is that just a girl thing? Or did guys do that too? So, and pre-internet, if possible, if you could answer that for me. Or, you know, if, if there was somebody that you were just head over heels as a young teen or preteen, let me know. So, I want to show you these tiger beads. And we'll walk through, through these. And you will get to see the one of the loves of my life. So let's get started. So this is the tiger bead from June of 1971 and it was 50 cents and on the cover is David Cassidy, Bobby Sherman, and Donny Osmond. And these were kind of three of several heartthrobs. Um, I did not have a crush on Bobby Sherman. It, to me, he just felt older, too old for me. But David Cassidy, definitely. Look how cute he was. And Donny Osmond, I don't know. I actually liked the Jacksons better than the Osmonds. But anyway, so here we go. falling apart. But here's the Osmonds, the Osmond brothers. And so here's a contest. Be adopted by the Osmonds. Your dreams can come true. You can be a member of the Osmond family for one week. Live, eat, sing, play, and become lifetime friends with one of America's greatest families. Interesting. It says you'll be flown free to Hollywood where you'll spend every minute of your life on an adventure with the Osmonds. Um, you go to a tour of Hollywood homes, a TV studio visit, Disneyland, plus many other surprises that will have you on cloud nine. So that's really interesting. So this is, you have to have your entries in by July of 71 and I think the next one actually shows somebody who went who won so we'll look at that I have not looked through these very closely so behind the scenes at Tiger Beat So look at this. These pages are very, um, just paper, old, you know, kind of yellowy paper, not color. And then, kind of a letters, Tiger Talk. I remember Tiger Talk. I think I wrote in once to Tiger Talk, and it never made it into publication, so. <laughs> so, 
the hottest guys on the market market were really Bobby Sherman, David Cassidy, um, Donnie Osmond, um, Michael Jackson. He, you know, they were young, Donnie and Michael, but uh, and a few others. So let's go through this. Lots of things to um, send off for, like The Secret of Bobby Sherman, the book you've been waiting for, all his secrets. Okay, here's a wig made of mode acrylic, stretch wig, 1098, 1098, 1698, ooh, because that's a lot of hair. That's a lot of acrylic hair. <laughs> and they come in black, off black, dark brown, medium brown, light brown, chestnut brown, light auburn, dark auburn, honey blonde, champagne blonde, ash blonde, platinum blonde, frosted, light frosted, slightly gray, and mostly gray. I would pour over these every single detail. The Story of My Life by David Cassidy, Chapter 7, in which I became a partridge and meet you. They always spoke like, it, you know, they were talking to you, these, these heartthrobs. And, uh, God, I just fed into that, fed into that. So they have this kind of a saccharine, sugar-coated story about his life. And you know it's completely written and scripted by someone else, you know, whoever his PR firm is. Because they keep it real clean. And we know, now we know, and I know David Cassidy has, you know, passed away, um, but he was really into drugs and drinking um, at a very young age. And of course, they wouldn't say that in here. And all these contests, they had contests left and right to, you know, just get you to buy more, you know, be involved more. Here's another mode acrylic. Only six ninety eight for this wig. Hooey. What a style. Okay, talking about the monkeys. Now, I did like the monkeys. I liked um, Davy Jones. I thought he was pretty cute. I didn't have a major crush on him. I just kind of liked him. Now, at last, you can own Bobby's Peace and Love Ring and Love Necklace. Oh, now these gals, Maureen McGovern and Susan Day. Now, Let's look at this. With her. And then, of course, uh, Peggy Lipton. I liked Peggy Lipton, too. Look at this. They give their height. And, and their weight. So, Susan Day is 5'7", five 5'7", foot seven, five foot seven and 92 pounds. 92 pounds. That is underweight. Um, Peggy Lipton was five foot six and a hundred and ten pounds. That is a little healthier. And then Maureen McGovern was five foot one and ninety pounds. And that's a little bit more appropriate. Now, Susan Day, for those of you who don't know, um, was the sister uh, in the Partridge family. Okay, so let's listen to their diets. She says, the only time I can remember 
having to diet was when I was modeling. I weighed 127 pounds when I was 15, and that was too much for the skinny look model. So my mom helped me to take off the excess weight. Wow. Good grief. And she kind of talks about what that diet was like and the stress of it and what she ate. So here's, here's what she would eat. Mom would get up and make breakfast for everyone in the family. Breakfast is so important because in the morning your blood sugar is at its lowest and it's when you should really have something to eat to get your body going. So I have a good source of protein, liver, fish, or ground beef, or ground meat for breakfast. For lunch, I just have a piece of fruit and then just a small portion of dinner. I began working so hard that I dropped that 15 pounds. Wow. That, I'm sorry, 92 pounds at 5'7 is too skinny. It is it's unhealthy if you have to force it, you know. And then Maureen McCormick. Did I say McGovern earlier? Maureen McCormick doesn't have to. I mean, she's a young girl here. She shouldn't be dieting. But this is, you know, this is where unhealthy body image starts, you know? Okay, five foot two, 100 pounds, and this is Karen Valentine. Oh, I loved her. She was in room 222. I love that show. But that's healthier, 100 pounds at five foot two. Okay. Um, Angela Cartwright. She was in uh, Lost in Space. She was one of the sisters. She's five foot five and a half at 108. And I think um, that's a little healthier. Bridget Hanley. Okay, this is even healthier. Five foot five and a half and 122. Much better in my mind. And then Stephanie Steele, five foot three and a half, 97 pounds. So they're setting up standards for girls. And, um, you know, you, my gosh, it's hard from the time you're 10 years old. It's hard. Okay, letting you in the secrets that Bobby Sherman has. meeting Donnie and Marie. Here we go. And then I lost 71 pounds of danger, dangerous fat in only 60 days. Do you know what kind of uh, adrenal crisis you could be in losing 71 pounds in two months? That's just so unhealthy. And it tells you how you know, to get onto this diet, um, and what is it? Probably some kind of speed, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, something, yeah, Cintron. Yep, it says, okay, here's how easy losing that ugly fat can be accomplished. Follow the Cintron method and take three of my special safe Cintron tablets each day before your meals. Follow the method and watch those ugly pounds and inches disappear. See how they're programming girls to look in the mirror and see ugly? Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's too bad. Okay, and then just some random photos of Mark and Jack. Oh, this is the kid from um, Huffin, HR Puffin, HR Puffin stuff. HR Puffin stuff. Yeah, that was English, I believe. Okay, here we go. Now we're getting into the color. The color pages. David Live. 
come along to one of his concerts in Seattle. And um, again, it's another sugar-coated, you know, very um, sweet, nothing bad. You know, they're not going to say he drank and snorted coke, you know, before his concert. But we know he did because he's later talked about that. Susan Day became a model. Besides losing tons of weight and being super skinny, here's another book for all the exclusive secrets of David Cassidy. Remember this guy, Chris Stone? I don't remember him. Oh, now this I would have cut out and pinned up on my wall in my room. Yep. Look at all those cute different smiles. Yeah. And the Jacksons. Michael Jackson. You know, he and Donny Osmond were actually friends. There was this kind of made-up thing uh, that they were rivals, and, you know, maybe they were, they were in terms of numbers, but I heard they were actually friends. So. Okay, here's another David Cassidy, Partridge Family special book that you can order. Lots of sales in these. Okay, Greg Brady, <laughs> and I don't know who that guy is. Stop. And then letters and notes to David, and supposedly he answered these, supposedly. And you can catch up on all the back magazines, the back issues. Don't miss colorful pinups. Bobby writes to you, Bobby Sherman. Look at this, here's another, you know. Join this fan club. In the 60s and 70s, there was a soap opera called Dark Shadows, and <laughs> it was great. Anyway. And this was Barnabas Collins. Oh my gosh. It was kind of scary, but kind of a love story, and you know, the typical drama of the day's um, soap operas. Okay, some more things you can buy, buy, buy. Buy David Cassidy's Choker Love Beads. Susan Day's Private Journal, a must for all girls to be more attractive and be able to achieve your special goals. And it's something you need to be really happy. Wow. Naturally, you'd like to be David Cassidy's close friend, but there's much, much more to Susan Day than you see on television. So you can order that book. You can order autographed portraits of David. I mean, just good grief. All right. 
Dear Kitty, asking for help. Dear Kitty, I want to have really curly hair, and I even gave myself a permanent, but nothing happened. Rollers don't make it. What can I try? Um, and she's telling her to use pin curls. Even, oh my goodness, they're not too difficult to sleep on. Yes, they are. They hurt. Dear Kitty, Tad and I have been going steady for two years, and now I feel like I want to break up with him so I can try someone new. I'm only 16. Tad loves me very much, and I don't want to hurt his feelings. Can you tell me how I should tell him? Dear Judy, there are times in your life when you'll have to hurt a person's feelings to keep from hurting yourself. This is one of those cases. Gently and tell, tenderly tell Tad that you think you should both date around. Then go through with your plan. Be brave, don't feel guilty, and eventually Tad will see that you're right. or, you know, submit your thing to be able to spend a day with them. All the back issues that you can buy. <sighs> yep, and then a few more pictures, you know. And here's a picture of Karen Carpenter. And what a sad, sad, tragic life. Speaking of anorexia and weight problems, you know, she died because of it. Okay. And the back. And I, oh, Kurt Russell. Oh, he was so cute. I don't know Rick Eli. And I don't know these two, Chris Stone and Philippe Fourquet. I don't know them. So now, here's December's. Oh, here's a picture of the Osmond family. So you can feel like part of the family. And this was the winner who won that week spending it with the Osmonds. And so, Donnie was even cuter in person than he was in the pictures. So it's just kind of going over everything they did. It's pretty cool. That'd be fun to win. more selling, selling, selling. Okay. Living with David by his roommate, Sam Hyman. So, hmm. Okay. Here we go. As far as, okay. <laughs> they give advice to girls what he's like to live with. He likes it when, girl, when a girl's not afraid to criticize him. David's not perfect, you know? Um, he doesn't want the girl to pretend he's always right. He's attracted to someone who's honest with him and will tell him what they think honestly. Um, he likes a girl who doesn't glop up her face with thick layers of makeup every morning. He likes clean, shining hair and bright eyes without two or three pounds of eye makeup. The look he likes is a clean, healthy glow. That's nice. And he likes a girl who wears the face God gave her and lights it up from the inside. 
Oh, now, somebody wrote that, of course. He likes a girl who wears blue jeans and other clothes that she can have fun in without worrying about getting messed up. Ah, oh, Davy Jones. He was cute. He was cute. Yeah. Let me see this. There. That might help a little. Music. Okay, so the Beach Boys, then and now. Group that would not probably be in this magazine would be somebody like Led Zeppelin or Pink Floyd. And after I had my crush on David Cassidy, I did go to, golly, I think it was maybe David Gates, but then Jimmy Page. Holy Lord, did I love Jimmy Page. I was such a Jimmy Page, you know, from Led Zeppelin. Oh, I knew everything about him. And the thing about Jimmy Page and Led Zeppelin um, that we would do, my friend and I, we were 16, I think, and we had just gotten our licenses, and we would drive down to this one underground, it was called an underground record store, and we would buy bootleg albums, record albums, from things like Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin. And... They were horribly recorded. They sounded terrible, but it was a bootleg recording. So those were really popular and illegal, you know, to record and produce a record. But we did. The Jackson Five's Life at Home. A strict father. And interesting, supposedly, this is, yeah, this is written by their father, Joe Jackson. And he says, I've always been strict, and I mean really strict. That was the only way to keep them in line with all the odds stacked against them. I told them no messing around, and they knew what I meant. I meant no messing by skipping school or misbehaving in class, and if I caught them doing something I'd ordered them not to do, it meant a good spanking. Mm. Wow. Wow. Oh, Donny Osmond asks, are you my mystery girl? And then my brother Bobby, Bobby Sherman, is written by his brother, or no, excuse me, his sister, his sister. Now, it's a picture like this that would just send me over the moon. Wistful, oh my gosh, yeah, he was so cute. A lot of these things are the same ads from the last magazine. And here's more of that, girls, week with the Osmonds. She even got to meet David Cassidy, how cool is that? And Bobby Sherman, wow. Okay, this guy, Michael Gray, he was cute. He played in a, not a sitcom, a, a weekly show called, I think it was called Shazam. <laughs> he had like super, he, he lived, golly, did he live in a trailer with some, like an older friend or an older uncle, and he turned into this Shazam guy that could kind of save the day. He was cute.
Now see, Shirley Jones, I thought she was the all-American perfect mom. I really did. I thought she was just the mom of all moms. More from Bobby Sherman. The Jacksons. Let's see who what do we have here? I can't see who it is. Marlon and Jackie. Yeah, Marlon and Jackie Jackson. Oh, here we go. Okay, are we pandering to the young girls or what? David's dressing room, and here he is with his shirt off. Oh, wow. There he is. If that didn't send... Little hearts a-throbbing, I don't know what would. And then Michael Gray. And this guy, I don't know who he was. I guess he... Wes Stern, I guess he did, um, you know, shows, or, or um you know, had little bit pieces on different programs like the Partridge Family or things like that. But I don't remember him too much. And it's talking about the kind of girl he likes. Oh my God. Oh my God, listen to this. What things turn you off about a girl? And he says, too much eye makeup. And I like a girl who has a sense of pride in herself. Brown teeth and fat girls, no. I don't mean that. Fat girls don't turn me off because I was a big, I was big as a kid. Um, as a result, I was very unpopular. But I don't like sloppiness. And you know what turns me on? I like a girl who has utilized everything and is the best that she can be from everything that God has given her. So it's kind of like this, uh, I don't like girls with brown teeth and, you know, if they're fat. Um, I don't really mean that. He's joking, but probably did mean it. And then at home with Susan Day. Um... I really admired her. I wanted to be like her. I wanted to be tall and skinny like her. Um, and I could never be. I was short and curvy. <laughs> okay, and here's more on Michael Gray. It's really starting to rain outside again. We've had so much rain, oh my goodness. Flooding. And it's been pretty bad if you've heard about our California rains. More on the Partridge family, behind the scenes. And then the dear kitty. same choker neckband that Bobby Sherman wears. More cute faces that were just so endearing. Concert photos. Sing a song with David. Cherish. Oh, so they've got the lyrics here. So you can sing along with him. Cherish is the word I use to describe All the feelings that I have I give for you inside I loved the Partridge Family albums, um, record albums. Oh my goodness, I loved them. And then, 
supposedly people writing in to letters to David Cassidy or Susan Day and them answering back. Interesting. And you know darn well they didn't write these. You just know it. And then the last page. Oh, that's so cute. And you know what? I love this picture. His teeth aren't perfect. I love the character of his teeth. That used to be okay to have teeth that weren't completely perfect. Here, look. You know, but full of character. So. So that is it, my walk down memory lane with Tiger Beat magazine. And I would have had this magazine. Anything with David Cassidy, I had. By the way, I got these off of eBay, and they are not cheap. They are not cheap. So, they've become collector's items. So, I'm just going to put them away and um, <laughs> let my kids deal with them when I die. <laughs> let them figure it out. Okay. Well, what did you think? Um, different than today's magazines, but I still think we have that push for stars to be, you know, marketed and presented out to the target market, you know. I don't think that ever changes. So, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for watching, and I hope this blah 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 um, look back through the early 70s at my heart throbs and the little stories helped relax you. So I will say goodbye for now and wish you so much peace, so much love so much health, so much wisdom, and I will see you in the next.